We're talking with Carl Torbush today, head coach of ETSU's newly revived football program. Coach Torbush discusses his influences growing up in the Knoxville area, coaching all over the South, and the personal convictions which help him guide the young men of ETSU football. Stay tuned, we're turning on the spotlight. Coach, thank you for being here today with us. I appreciate you coming by. Glad to be here and it's exciting to always be able to talk about ETSU. All right, so first off I want to ask, where are you from? What's your background? Well, you know, I was born in uh, Salisbury, North Carolina. My dad was a lifetime railroad man, Southern Railway, and uh, when I was 12, he got transferred to Knoxville, Tennessee. So when people ask me uh, where I'm from, I basically am from Knoxville. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to junior high there. I went to high school there. I went to Carson Newman College uh, for undergraduate school. Mm -hmm. So the, my uh, growing up years were basically in Knoxville. That's where basically my family is and my friends are. So uh, when somebody asks me where I'm from, it's basically Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay. Now you mentioned Carson Newman. I was going to ask what your education background was like. Well, you know, I, I, I went to, I had a really unique situation. I went to uh, Knoxville Austin East High School. I was in the first graduating class. Uh, Austin was the Knoxville All Black School at that time. Uh, East was about 60-40 white. They consolidated to make it Austin East and okay. at that point it became about 98 percent black. Uh, there was one white athlete in the school and you're looking at him, uh, which was really, really unique back in the late 60s. And uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. As a matter of fact, this past ball game against uh, Cumberland's, I had about 15 of my former uh, classmates and teammates come up to the ball game. So I had a, a, just a wonderful time uh, reminiscing with them. And I think our players enjoyed getting to see them, that, uh, that they understood some of my class reunion pictures on my wall are for real. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, I, like I said, I went to Knoxville, Austin East. I did my undergraduate work at Carson Newman College where I got a BS in physical education and recreation. Then I went to Baylor as a graduate assistant and got my master's there. And uh, then I had additional work at the uh, UNC Chapel Hill when I was coaching there. I took some hours, but uh, I really hadn't used those hours much. But uh, you know, my Basically, my education came from high school at Knoxville to mm -hmm. Carson Newman, and like I say, my master's came from Baylor. Right, right. Did that that mix of uh, black versus white students at your high school? Did that have a, a profound impact on oh, the way yeah, you look I, at you things? You know, I, I look back. I, I don't have any doubt that the Lord put me in that situation because when you look at it over the years. Uh, mm -hmm. The majority of the defensive players that I've coached, where I was a defensive football coach until I became a head coach. Probably nine out of every ten starters we had were black kids, so I, I have no doubt that uh, my ability to get along with people, I don't care what color they are, uh, sure, sure. obviously helps, but uh, you know, the, the opportunity to be in a situation like that, uh, I think molded me in a lot of different ways, and uh, you know, even though everybody's different, mm -hmm. everybody's basically the same, and right. uh, the main thing is treat people right, uh, ask no more from them than you ask yourself, mm -hmm. make sure that uh, everybody you are around that they understand you are for real and uh, the same thing that I try to relate to our players because they understand you know that there's certain things that I'm not going to vary from and mm -hmm. uh, they understand that you know when I talk to our players it's real simple I mean I want you to uh, have respect for adults I want you to have manners I want you to be able to uh, respond and look at people in the eye and let your yes be yes and your no be no but uh, right. you know Do you think I, sports uh, provides a uh, a method of teaching that? Oh, I don't. I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, that's one of the reasons that I am what I am is because mm -hmm. of my high school coach and my college coaches and uh, the people that got me in the coaching. And uh, as I've gotten older, uh, the obviously the experiences and the wisdom that I've gained from successes and failures along the way, I think have, have helped me be able to adopt and relate to different types of people, mm -hmm. different personalities, because everybody's not raised the same way. I mean, sure. you have. One young man who's raised in a uh, wealthy household. You have mm -hmm. one young man who's raised by a grandmother and uh, never had anything. You have some young man who never had a parent. You have some young man that uh, you just got a wide spectrum in the coaching mm -hmm. field. And uh, you know the thing that I've always tried to do and is get as close to our players as I possibly can, but also understand that uh, I'm going to demand respect by my uh, position. Uh, at the same time, I'm going to try to be very, very consistent in what I do, and mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's going to be a decision that they don't really like to do, but at the same time, down the road, 5, 10, 15 years down the road, hopefully it will help them as they make decisions and how to raise their young people or how to uh, adjust to different people that they may be coaching. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I try to live, I try to 
walk the walk as well as talk the talk. And I sure. hope our players sure. understand that and respect that. Uh, and that's one thing. That's one of the reasons I'm in coaching because I don't see much of that in the world right now. And it's really sad, but it is what it is. And is that something then you definitely can remember growing up and experiencing where, uh, like you said, you know, the coach does something you don't like, but it turns out to be the better in the long run and teaches you what you need to do. Oh, I don't, you know, back, back in the 60s and that's way before you were born, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, when your coach said something, there, mm -hmm. there, you know, there was no discussion. Right. I mean, you believed him. Uh, you knew he was right. You did exactly what he asked you to do. Uh, there was no interference by parents. I mean, that, when, that, mm -hmm. when your coach or your preacher uh, gave you wisdom or knowledge or told you what to do or what not to do, uh, there was no interference by parents because they felt like those two people were going to try to uh, mold us in the direction mm -hmm. we needed to go. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, I know I'm going, uh, a lot of my, our players call me old school, and mm -hmm. what old school means is yes or no, sir. Take your hats mm -hmm. off when you're in the house. Uh, represent your parents and your family and your school mm -hmm. in a first-class manner. Do things right. Make good decisions. And, uh, you know, even though when they say I'm old school, they, they think it's going to hurt my feelings. It really makes me feel good that I still have the same values that I was taught when I was a right. young man how to do things right. And if you did something wrong that you knew that you, there was going to be consequences to deal with sure. the, the sure. decisions you made. Sure. Okay. So what is your background then in sports? You know, uh, what did you play in high school and college? Well, I mean, like most people in that era, I'm talking about the 60s and the 70s, uh, as a uh, junior high athlete, as a high school athlete, I played them all, football, basketball, baseball, and mm -hmm. loved playing them all. Uh, in the summer, played baseball till it got football time, and you played football till it got mm -hmm. basketball time, and just kept rotating it around. And, so whatever and you the, can get your hands on. Uh, there's no doubt. And uh, I, I just hate to see that it, athletics have gone to where it's gone because everybody's become specialized. I mean, in high school right now, I mean, a football player is a football player. Right. A basketball player is a basketball mm -hmm. player. Normally a baseball player is a, ba a baseball player. And all those sports have become 12-month sports. Mm -hmm. So and as a recruiter in college, you know, the first thing I ask, if we're recruiting a defensive back, does he play basketball? Mm -hmm. Reason I ask that because if he plays basketball, he's normally got great hand-eye skills. He's got great jumping ability. He's able to play some defense. Uh, sometimes, if you're just a football player, you may be fast, but you hadn't been brought up playing sandlot football because you're playing computer games all day long, mm -hmm. and you don't have the same hand-eye skills. In my opinion, uh, unless you're doing those type of things, so uh, you know, I'm, I, I still am very old school in that respect. That I like guys. Uh, if I had the perfect world, I would want guys that have played multiple sports, and right. uh, they, they know that. I mean, I had, uh, you know, you look at my career, I mean, at North Carolina, Julius Pepper stands out, Ronald Curry stands out, who was National Gatorade Player of the Year in high school in football and basketball. <laughs> Both those young men came to play football, but because they were good enough and could help North Carolina win a national championship, I allowed them to play basketball, and because of that, I have no doubt that, that was one of the reasons they, that they got in the Final Four was because of Julius Peppers and Ronald Curry at that time. And uh, like I say, the only thing I ever ask of a young man if he comes to ETSU is, if you're good enough to help us in track, I want you to do that. If mm -hmm. you're good enough to pitch and win ball games in baseball, I want you to do that. The only mm -hmm. thing that I will demand of you is that you do well academically and go to class and do your work. If you do those two things, I want you to experience every experience you can have because at some point, you're going to become 30 and 40 and 50, mm -hmm. and you don't get to play anymore. And the experiences and uh, that you had back then in dealing with the success, failure, uh, work ethic, uh, just th th so many things that you can do, and also help us have a chance to win. I, I really believe that uh, that's what I want to be. I want to be a guy that uh, helps these young men get the most out of life, most out of their right. experiences, so that when they become my age, hopefully they'll look back and help the people that they're raising uh, turn into the young men that they have mm -hmm. become. Okay, so you mentioned the specialization of sports in high school. Uh, why is that, do you think? Is that a product well, of Well, I, I think, you know, you look, at, you look at football. Football has become a year-round sport. You mm -hmm. play football, you lift weights. Uh, in the summer, you got seven-on-seven -seven camps all summer long. Mm -hmm. Basketball, you got basketball during the year. Then you got AAU basketball in the summer, so that's become all your sport. Now baseball has taken up with that. Uh, after baseball season is over with in high school, they go into the summer and they play summer uh, travel ball, which is all year long, another 100 games. So, I mean, unless you are really, really a great athlete 
or you have some understanding coaches, which I hate to say it, but there are a lot of coaches that are very selfish and they're more interested in winning and losing and seeing a young man develop. Mm -hmm. uh, then if they, if you're not in that certain situation and you are not a great athlete, it's hard to do those anymore because mm -hmm. in old days, if you were the, the best quarterback and also the best point guard, it didn't matter when you started playing basketball, you were probably gonna be starting within a couple of weeks because you were better than what they were playing at. Right. Obviously in track, uh, if you can run fast, you can run fast, or if you can throw a shot put uh, 55 or 60 feet, uh, you can pick it up and throw it that far and beat everybody that's out there, you should be doing that. Sure. Uh, baseball, again, like I say, it's, uh, th there's so many athletic skills that in today's world, I think, you don't get to magnify those because of being so specialized. It's just like I said, you can take a guy out in football and run him in a 40. He may run a 4 five forty, and he may vertical jump uh, 33 inches, uh, which as an athlete, you say, that's really good. We need him. But then all of a sudden, there's a ball in there, and the guy jumps, and the ball hadn't even got there yet. And the thing that basketball does is gives him that ability to time to jump. Hmm. So, again, that's – you know, athletic ability, I would rather have athletes that play all the sports, and it's up to us as coaches to make sure that we turn that into the right. refined athlete in that, that specific college sport that we possibly can. But, you know, I could go on, on and on and on and on about that. You know, this group I talked about the other day, my teammates from Austin East, I look back at it, we had, uh, you know, a guy that uh, long jumped back in 1970, right. 26 feet, six inches, which is absolutely unbelievable. That's still with placing the national mm -hmm. NCAA Division One track meet. In today's world, we had another guy that ran a 9-200 that didn't even run track because you couldn't play foot, excuse me, you couldn't run track and play baseball. He was a baseball player. Right. But in, it in, almost, it almost sounds like uh, the academic idea of, you know, having a well-rounded education because you gain skills from all these different I topics. don't think there's any doubt yeah. about that. Yeah, and so I, it's just like that. You gain these skills from these different sports. And I go back into education. The thing that I felt really, really strong about Carson Newman is our classes taught us how to teach, mm -hmm. not just to learn, but right. how to teach. Right. And I think it's very, very uh, important in today's world is, you know, not just to have uh, the ability to recite what you have learned, but, to but also it. to be able to teach. If I'm an A student, that's great, mm -hmm. but the ability for me to be able to teach you, to teach me back, that's the true teacher. And okay. uh, I've always felt, you know, when I was a high school teacher, my biggest thrill was when I had everybody in the class make a 90 or 100 on a math test. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really, you know, it frustrates me at time when I, I hear a teacher say, well, half my class flunked. Mm -hmm. Well, to me, if half of your class flunks, that means you didn't, in my opinion, <laughs> you didn't do a very good job of teaching what you were trying to teach. So, right. you know, I think it's really important that, uh, just like when I'm talking to you, that you understand what I'm saying. That's sometimes mm -hmm. the reason that I ask people to recite back what I have said to make sure they're hearing what I did say. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we're going to take a break there, and we'll come right back after the break. All right. Thank you. Well, thanks for sticking around with us. So I want to move on next to your coaching. How did that road in your life kind of unfold in front of you? How did you know that you wanted to be a coach? Or well, it, kind of unusual. Uh, you know, I've got a favorite Bible verse, Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and to help you, plans to give you a future. All I, need, all I knew growing up in junior high, high school, and colleges is I like playing sports. Mm -hmm. I like playing football. I like playing intramural basketball in college. I love playing baseball. Uh, quite honestly, I had no idea. I thought I'd just play the rest of my life. Right. But you know, at some point, as you get to be a senior in college, you realize that something's getting ready to happen. I did have the opportunity to play for a short time in uh, professional baseball. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, uh, a lot of people don't even realize it, but uh, my first job was as a head baseball coach at Southeast Louisiana University. Uh, on the 1AA level in, in baseball. And quite honestly, if you ask me today what sport I like the most, what sport I enjoyed coaching the most, mm -hmm. it would be baseball, not football. But mm -hmm. my career, because I was a football baseball coach at Southeastern, my career just started going football and baseball. I had to make a decision either to stay there and continue to coach two sports, which was tough. At a young age, it wasn't a problem because I thought you're supposed to work all the time anyway. 
But then when I, I left Southeast and I got, went to Louisiana Tech as a football coach, and from there my career just kind of took off. I went from there as the defensive coordinator to Ole Miss. From Ole Miss, I uh, went back to Louisiana Tech as the head coach. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to go with Mac Brown to the University of North Carolina, and that's where I was born, was in the state of North Carolina. Right. So that was kind of like playing for the New York Yankees. Mm -hmm. So when he asked me to come, I went. And I was there for 13 years, last three years as the head coach. Uh, last year, uh, which all coaches are going to have this happen to them, I got fired, which, uh, you know, it is what it is. If you don't win enough ball games, usually they're going to ask you to leave. Uh, and if you win and if you win enough ball games, somebody's going to ask you to come. So, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, when I left there, I had the opportunity to go to University of Alabama, which is a, just an absolutely wonderful, probably the, as you know, in today's world, I mean, one of the top, if not the top football. Right. Right. traditional rich schools mm -hmm. in the United States and right, if I had to pick out one place in America it would be Alabama as far as athletics they just love sports there mm -hmm. and they specifically love their football and then right, right, after there I went to Texas A&M and uh, again the last year there didn't do as well so I just decided to come back home and when I say come back home I went back to Carson Newman College mm -hmm. uh, which is something I'd always want to do was coach back at my alma mater get back into East Tennessee because I'd been gone and Right. Uh, as many years as I've been gone to different places, uh, East Tennessee was always home to the place I loved mm -hmm. and I always wanted to be back. So I had the opportunity to come back to Carson Newman and coach under Ken Sparks, who's one of the all-time leading his, uh, winning his coaches in history. And then after three years, I tell people I got dumb again and I wanted to get back in the big time. So I went back to Mississippi State and then I went to Kansas and uh, basically then I had a bout with prostate cancer, which that changed a little bit of outlook on life so I wanted right. to come back home so I did I came back and uh, moved back to Sevierville and uh, then I just uh, because of me and my wife and uh, where I was and the age uh, you know I wasn't ready to completely retire mm -hmm. so I, I went to Liberty and uh, from there I just want to come back home I, it's hard to imagine a 60 year old man getting homesick but that's basically what I did I wanted to be in East Tennessee when you got to come back home you gotta exactly come back home. so I moved back on the lake and <laughs> And then uh, the rest is kind of history. I go back to Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13, East Tennessee State, decided to start football. And this uh, is the right time. obviously, I, I think, you know, if Philip Former would have been interested in the head job, that's who they'd like to have, and, they, and rightfully so. Uh, but Philip wanted to be involved in helping them hire a head football coach, and Philip and I had been friends and uh, competitors for many, many years. <laughs> and the next thing I know, I'm getting a call from Philip find out if I had any interest in this job and I told him I said if it's been 20 years ago I'd have got on my hands and knees and and walked on my hands and knees to get these Tennessee because that's one of the the jobs that I'd always wanted because mm -hmm. of ETSU because of East Tennessee right. because right. of the Tri-Cities because of being back home mm -hmm. uh, so after a lot of thought and prayer then me and my wife decided if it's meant to be then we'd like to have that opportunity and here right. I am now so right. uh, and it's so. been a whirlwind, but it's been an exciting time. It's, uh, I've loved every minute of what we're doing. I enjoy being around people, making people smile, uh, making people see that uh, people in probably uh, positions that uh, they're not ever going to be there at that position, that we're all real, mm -hmm. that I, I love to put a smile on other people's face. I like to see the involvement. Uh, I, I said it time and time again treat people the way you want to be treated and uh, anybody that I see that's that's what I want to do I want to make sure that they understand hey I'm just old Carl Torbush from Knoxville Tennessee that uh, wants to help this program get to where it needs to be and mm -hmm. to help people feel good about what they're doing and feel good about their life because everybody doesn't have the same opportunities I've been very very fortunate mm -hmm. there'd be many many people in the world like to have the opportunity that I've had over the years right. but right. they don't I know how fortunate I've been. I know mm -hmm. that uh, that I have a chance to touch a lot of people's lives, and you know what I want to do is be able to touch them in a positive direction and see where this program started, uh, basically about three years ago, which has been a whirlwind to see where we've gotten now, which is absolutely unbelievable. Right. And uh, would you, you say know, that's one of the chief uh, goals of having any sort of sports team with the school is that people can latch on to it and enjoy themselves and can see it as a point of pride. Oh yeah, I don't, you know, I, I said it time and time again, when, when ETSU dropped football in uh, 2003, mm -hmm. I, you know, I didn't even have a dog in the fight. I mean, mm -hmm. I'd never been to school here. We used to play them when I was at Carson Newman, but I knew many, many people that went right. to ETSU. And I know when, when they dropped football, it broke so many people's heart. Mm -hmm. And I'm a firm believer, 
if you got a school as big as we are, 15, 16,000 students, if you're in the state of Tennessee, if you're in the South, you need to have college football. Mm -hmm. Because if you have college football, I think the enrollment goes up. Mm -hmm. You've got a band, you've yeah. got cheerleaders, uh, you've got excitement, you've got alumni, you've got former lettermen, that they all come together. And I'm telling you now, in 2003, when football uh, disappeared from here, there were so many, uh, there was so much scar tissue. Uh, there were so many people that uh, really, really, I mean, it was like a death in the family. And mm -hmm. to watch what has happened the last three years is absolutely amazing just to see a lot of doubters, uh, a lot of naysayers originally, they never get it going. To see where we are right now, to see us getting ready to play University of Tennessee here in a couple years, right. the University of Georgia, Vanderbilt, mm -hmm. uh, to see us getting ready to get in a brand new stadium in the uh, mm -hmm. next football season, 2017, mm -hmm. to see us have no players three years ago to over 115 players now, uh, to see us have no band, now mm -hmm. we've got a band, to see mm -hmm. us have the number of cheerleaders we got now just to see the involvement, the excitement right. of everything that's going on. You know, it touches my heart and mm -hmm. I think it touches a lot of people's hearts just to see how far this thing has gone in such a short period of time. Right. And it's it impressive. all goes back to, and I don't mean to short, uh, shorten you, but uh, uh, Dr. Nolan's reason is here. I yeah. mean, without Dr. Nolan stepping out and being county, because there's a lot of people that really didn't want football back and I understand that. It's mm -hmm. just, it is what it is. But for him to step out and be counted and uh, to make a commitment that we're bringing football back and never waver mm -hmm. from that, that is the reason we are where we are right now. And it's I think a brave move. <laughs> a big time move, mm -hmm. I mean, because he had to do things that uh, a lot of people probably didn't want him to do, mm -hmm. but for the betterment of this area of the country, for ETSU uh, to get us back into SOCON, which is our conference. I mean, right. just right. In, in our conference now, you can get in the car and drive and be there in two or three hours. Right. Uh, where we were before football came back, you didn't do that. You mm -hmm. probably didn't go to very many away games because of the distances you had to go. Right, right. Uh, but uh, yeah, just to see you. all the things that's happened in the last three years, it, it, when you look back, and I don't do it very often, but when mm -hmm. I look back, I say it is really, really amazing uh, where we started and where we've come in a short period of time. Okay. Well, we're running low on time. So quickly, I want to ask you, you know, you mentioned that when you have a football team, you get cheerleaders, you get a band, you get a, an invigoration of the local community. But what about people who disagree with that and are worried about the academic aspect of it because the university is naturally primarily academic first and foremost and there's a lot of people who know who see the negative or see whether or not they exist but they see the negative drawbacks of sports and they worry that it affects the well, academic performance you know I too think much emphasis on the sports less on the academic I, I think what do you if think you get that? people that are 100 percent academics uh, then they're missing a lot of part of life Mm -hmm. And when I say that, I'm talking about from social, uh, from the Tri-Cities area to the mountains, to the mm -hmm. lakes, to athletics. Uh, you don't have to be an athlete to enjoy athletics. Uh, right. Right. You know, we want to make sure that everybody that we sign is a student athlete mm -hmm. and a student first. Mm -hmm. uh, because one thing that we require and we're going to demand, you're going to go to class, mm -hmm. you're going to do your work, and I will promise you, if they'll do those two things, that they will graduate from college. I have no doubt. I've been in this business over 40 years, and I've never seen a young man or a young lady yet that did those two things that didn't eventually graduate from college. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to be a positive role model on, on campus. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of you, you know, a lot of the things you see are nationally uh, about a problem in the pros right. or a problem here, a problem there. You know, when you've got 15,000 students, you're going to have problems. Obviously, right. it's like I tell our players all the time, when you decided to become an a, a college athlete and a college football player, you have decided to be different mm -hmm. because so you, you, you can get in trouble then. and nobody knows about it. Mm -hmm. Me as the head coach at ETSU, if I get in trouble, that. you're going to know about it. If a yeah. football player or a basketball player gets in trouble, you're going to know about it. Mm -hmm. It may be something minor, but mm -hmm. that minor can turn into major. And uh, again, I think we've done a really, really nice job of that, knock on wood. But again, like I say, when you get 100 to 115 young men or young women together, and they're between the ages of 17 and 22, you need everybody's not going to do everything perfect. Sure. But at the same time, I can show you all the benefits that I think that college football gives to a university. Because like I say, the, the amount of money 
that we've raised since bringing football back to me is is big time. Mm -hmm. uh, I hadn't been to any event yet uh, outside of the athletic realm that has not been very well received. Right. Uh, I really do enjoy going to see people that really don't like football, that I get a chance to to sell them on why I think football can be, or not just football, college athlete mm -hmm. athletics can be a benefit. Sure. Because again, you got to where would those hundred some band members be? Right? Would they be at ETSU Probably if we not. didn't have football? Probably not. Would those thirty extra cheerleaders be at ETSU when they could go to another university and right. be a cheerleader? Probably not. Right. Uh, You've got 115 uh, football bodies that uh, probably about 60 of them are on some type of scholarship. The other 50 or 60 are getting nothing that are paying tuition and fees and books and room and board to come here that, uh, you know, that, put, that are putting money into the ETSU the to help this place get better, which brings their uh, kids back. Mm -hmm. uh, the, young, the young people that we're touching right now, I'm talking about from five, six, mm -hmm. seven, eight years old, that they're going to be around ETSU football. So here in 15 years, I want to go to East Tennessee State right. because that's what right. I've been raised as. Right. Last 10 years, they hadn't been that. There sure. had been no football. Sure. There has been great basketball, baseball, track, uh, volleyball. I mean, we've got a really, really good athletic program, and it's been, uh, I think it's been a program that uh, uh, Dr. Dick Sander has done a really nice job as our athletic director. The uh, hiring of Scott Carter was a great, great hire because he's right. had the ability to go out uh, all over the place and raise money. So there's a lot of good things going right now. Obviously, we want to win more football games, well, but we've got to do that a little bit at a time and build a foundation before we can build the right. house and finish the house out. Exactly. Well, I appreciate you coming down then. That's all the time we have for today. So, Coach Torbush, I appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing what we can do in the future years. Well, we're excited about it, and I appreciate you taking the time to visit with me.